Okay, I assume you watch it already. Let me ask you to choose five problems from number four to number 32 for me to work on. Not, then I choose problems myself. Okay, so this is I paid. sent problem in the chat. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. Sorry. A number 14, 12, 14, 16, 26. Number 12, 14, 16, 26. Okay, let me try. Number 12. <clears throat> Okay, summation from k equals to 1 to infinity of 2k minus 1, k squared minus 1 over k plus 1, k squared plus 4 squared. Determine if it is conversion or divergent solution. So is this series conversion or divergent? Conversion. <clears throat> we'll take that a sub k first. A sub k is 2k minus 1 k squared minus 1 over k plus 1 k squared plus 4 squared. Yeah. <clears throat> and notice that the top is degree of 3. And the bottom one is degree of five. Okay, so I will compare that. Compare to uh, a b sub k one over k square because the difference of the degrees on the top and the bottom is uh, degree of two at the bottom. Okay. Now then, limit k goes to infinity of a sub k over b sub k is equal to limit k goes to infinity of that ugly thing. <clears throat> so that's 2k minus 1, k squared minus 1 over k plus 1, k squared plus 4 squared, multiplied by, uh, we're supposed to divide by 1 over k squared, but that's the same to multiply by k squared over 1. <clears throat> right? Uh, you can FOIL that if you want. You can FOIL that if you want. But I think what I will do is I will divide the top and the bottom by k to the fifth. So then it becomes like this. It becomes like this. Maybe I write this down first. Now both of them degree of five. Right, the top and the bottom degree of five. Okay, so I will divide the top by k to the fifth and the bottom divide by k to the fifth. But I kind of like rearrange that though. I want to rearrange that so I will get limit k goes to infinity of k squared over k squared here. And the one in the first group I divide by k 
So I already use up three cakes, right? And in the second group, I divide by k square. Instead of foiling them, I distribute the division by k to the fifth. Okay, so this will be k over k plus one over k. This will be k squared over k squared plus four over k squared being squared. You can foil that also, but eventually you will see you divide by k to the fifth each term, right? Instead of foiling them, let me distribute that k to the fifth. Now this becomes one times two minus one over k, one minus one over k squared over one plus one over k, one plus four over k squared being squared. And that will be one times two times one over one times one squared. That's two, which is positive and finite. Okay. Now then the sum of B K, which is from one to infinity, is one over K squared is convergent or divergent? Convergent. Why? P series. By P series. So you need to give argument. Okay, by P series. P equals to two. Right? And then so by limit comparison test, the sum of A sub N from a K, A sub K. So k equals to 1 to infinity, which is the ugly series. I need to be explicit though. 2k minus 1 times 3 squared minus 1 over a plus 1 times k squared plus 4. is convergent. You can also do this. <clears throat> you can also do this. Uh, that's solution number one. Solution number two, I didn't realize that earlier, but notice that, so solution number two, this a sub k here, which is 2k minus 1 times k squared minus 1 over k plus 1, k squared plus 4. This is less than equals to, notice that on the top, on the top, that 2k minus 1 is less than 2k, and k squared minus 1 is less than k squared. Now the denominator k plus one is greater than k. k squared plus four squared is greater than k squared being squared. But then on the right hand side, I get four two k cubed over k to the fifth, which is two over k squared. Right? Now, the thing is, the thing is, the series 2 over k squared, or k equals to 1 to infinity, is equal to 2 times the series from 1 to infinity of 1 k squared uh, is convergent by p series p equals 2. Right, plus, uh, therefore, so by comparison test, not limit comparison test, by comparison test, by comparison test, the series of A sub K is convergent, even though I have to make sure that A sub K is positive, at least non-negative. 
Okay, so it has to be non-negative and bounded above by something convergent. Therefore, the comparison test is convergent. I think this is a better argument. This is a better argument. Notice that this argument in step two, uh, the second method here, does not work. It does not work if I change it to be, let's say, 2k plus 1, k squared plus 1, over k minus 1, k squared minus 4 squared, and the series actually start from 3, let's say. Right. Then it's it's actually not doable. It's not doable using the second method, but still doable using the first method. Okay. Uh, using this problem, uh, you also notice that a problem may be doable using more than one different method. More than uh, one different method. Number fourteen. The series is the series from n equals to 2 to infinity of square root of n over n minus 1 convergent or divergent solution. Yeah. n minus 1 is uh, for this is positive is less than n for n greater or equals to 2. Like, of course, like the n minus 1 is less than n, right? But I want to keep it positive. I want to keep it positive. Therefore, the reciprocal will be the, the other way of the inequality, right? I, I will do comparison test here. And then square root of n over n minus 1 is greater than square root of n over n, is it right? Which is 1 over square root of n. Now, the series of 1 over square root of n from 2 to infinity is the convergent, convergent or divergent. Divergent. Is divergent why? This series p equals to one half. Okay, then by comparison test, the greater series. Uh, but again, this technique does not help if I massage the problem into the series of square root of n over n plus 1. Uh, you can't use comparison here, but you still can use limit comparison. You can use limit comparison. Limit, limit comparison test. Okay, because even though this guy is smaller, right, it is smaller. But when n is really large, they actually goes to uh, they, they they actually goes pretty close. They behave very similarly. Okay. Uh, this is the way I learn my my sequence series, and uh, I think instead of just answering the problem, ask yourself under what situation your method will fail. Okay, and like in this case here, when I change the denominator n minus 1 becomes n plus 1, then the solution I gave you in black here will not work anymore because I need to bound it above, right? But limit comparison test is there to help us uh, if you cannot bound it above, but they behave similarly, especially when n really large, then you use limit comparison test. Number 
Number 16 is the series from one to infinity of one over square root of, actually not square root, cube root of, cube root of 3n to the fourth plus one, conversion or divergent. Solution. Notice that one over square root of actually cube root of three n to the fourth plus one must be less than equals to one over cube root of three n to the fourth. And at the same time, it must be positive, right? Okay, but on the other hand, the one on the right hand side here, that's basically one over cube root of three times n to the four third, right? Then take a look. The series from one to infinity of one over cube root of three n to the fourth root is equal to one over cube root of three, that's constant multiple of a P series. And this is convergent or divergent is convergent, right? By P series, P is four over three, which is greater than one. And so by comparison test, the series from one to infinity of one over cube root of e and to the fourth plus one is convergent. Yeah, because the, the terms are positive bounded above by a series that is convergent. Okay, that's for number 16, what else? Number 26. <clears throat> Number 26 is this series from two to, yeah, from two to infinity. I know it won't be from one because if n equals to one, it will be undefined. Now the thing is, I cannot bound it below. I cannot bound it above. But I have the feeling that this one n square root of n square root minus one will behave quite closely to one over n times square root of n square, right? Which is one over n square. Okay, so I will do limit comparison with them. Okay, solution. Let a sub n be one over n square root of n square root minus one, and d n be one over n square. Then I do limit comparison test. Limit n goes to infinity of a sub n. Space. It's one over n square root of n square minus one over one over n square. This is equal to limit n goes to infinity of n square on the top over n square root of n square minus one. Cancel one of the n, this is what I get. 
now divide by n on the top and the bottom. So I get n over n on the top. At the bottom, I get square root of n squared minus 1 over n. Let me continue. That is limit n goes to infinity of 1 over square root of n squared minus 1 over n squared. So this is limit n goes to infinity of 1 over square root of 1 minus 1 over n squared. That is 1 over 1, which is positive. <clears throat> okay, so now the sum of bn from n equals to 2 to infinity is equal to the summation n equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over n squared that is convergent by p series p equals to 2 which is greater than 1. Okay, so one of the series is convergent and the limit comparison of these two uh, two terms, the terms of these two series, is a finite positive number, positive finite number. So by limit comparison test, the series one over n times square root of n squared minus one is convergent. Any else? <clears throat> I actually like number 30. Even though I don't know what to compare that with. Number 30. is the series from one to infinity of n factorial over n to the n convergent or divergent. Let a sub n be the terms and this is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way to 3 times 2 times 1 over n times n times n times n times n times n. Is it right? Maybe, maybe if I uh, kind of like break it up, this is n over n, which is 1 n minus 1 over n, which is slightly less than 1. This is slightly less than 1. Eventually, we have 3 over n, 2 over n, 1 over n. So, right? Now, notice that this is less than equal to 1 times 1 times 1. I can even say this is less than, because I just need n squared on the denominator, OK? So this is less than 1, but I keep this 2 over n, 1 over n, which is 2 over n squared. In other words, a sub n is bounded above by 2 over n squared. Now, the thing is, you need to do this kind of massage, though. You have to do this kind of massage. You cannot, you cannot even just claim it. Oh, you know what? n factorial over n to the n is less than 2 over n squared. Oh, you need to give this kind of explanation. Okay? But then, but then, the series from 1 to infinity of 2 over n squared is 2 times the series, the P series of 2.
Now I bound it above by something convergent. I bound it above by something convergent. So by comparison test that series n factorial over n to the n is convergent. <clears throat> okay. Now let's see number, I think I'm done with this. Uh, how about number 34? Number 34. Estimate the sum. Use the sum. Use the sum of, uh, use maybe I, I kind of like make sure to use S10. Use as 10, the 10 partial sum to estimate the infinite sum of sine squared n over n cubed. Estimate the error. Okay, so uh, if you just need to find S10, then just use your calculator. S10 is equal to sine squared one over one cubed plus sine squared two over two cubed all the way to 10. Right? Sine squared 10 over 10 cubed. You know what? Let me use my Excel to do that. Yeah, I like to use Excel because it's more feasible. Okay, so this is the N, and then this is the sub N. Okay, I start from one. Up to 10. And then, and then this is equal to sign of this. Equal to sine function of this guy here. Let's see. I need to square it though. Give me a second. I need to square it. I need to square this. Divide it by a two cube, so cube of a two. Okay, then all I need to do is this. Then I get the sum. So this is my sum. The sum of the first 10 terms. Instead of doing it one by one, right? So this is 0 0.8. Three, two, five, two, nine, eight, 
zero one. Now the thing is, how do we estimate the error? So is the error big enough or is it small enough? Uh, we will do the following. The error denoted by E is basically the difference between S and S10. Right? Okay. It's still showing Excel. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, we get this one. Okay, but at the same time, I, I don't know this. I don't know this thing. I don't know this thing. That's unknown. The total sum is unknown. But I know that's bounded above by something else. This S, which is the sum of N equals to one to infinity of S sine squared N over N cubed is bounded above by the series is bounded above by the series one over n cube, right? So if I want the error, the error, you basically start from the 11th term, is it right? Is it okay? You start from the 11th term. Do you remember this? Now, then I will use integral test because I can find the error here bounded above by integral test from 10 to infinity of one over x cubed dx. Okay, so the error will be, but, but are you with me? So it's like, uh, notice the change here. This is the actual infinite sum from one right now, but the error will be the infinite sum minus the first 10 terms. So if you take the first 10 terms out from here, then you will start from the 11th term. Okay, now then uh, the, this is P series on the right hand side whose area is actually bounded above by integral from one less than. Is it okay? Now then that's equals to, so now let me stop here. So the error is less than equals to limit uh, t goes to infinity of integral from 10 to, to t of x to the negative 3 dx. So the error is less than negative 1 half x to the negative 3 from 10 to t. This is limit t goes to infinity of, let me pull the negative one half out, of one over t squared plus one half of one over t squared. That's equals to one over t. Zero point zero zero five. So the error is less than equal to zero point zero zero five. Less than that. 
Now you will see that the nice thing about this is when the end goes to the, uh, the more times you take, the error gets uh, smaller, right? As your N is increasing, then your T also increasing. I'm sorry, not your T, your 10 also increase. Okay, so eventually your uh, error, the upper bound of your error will actually go to zero. S, the number of times gets larger. In actuality, the, the error may be a lot less than this though. The error may very likely less than this, a lot less than this, not just less than this, but most, uh, a lot less than this. <clears throat> okay. Mm, but I get interested with question number 38. Question number 38. Honestly, I don't know what's the answer. For what values of P, for what values of P? Does the series from two to infinity of one over N to the P L and N Converge. <clears throat> now we know for sure that uh, and one over n to the p ln n, for sure this is less than equals to one over n to the p. For p or for n greater equals to three, actually to e. Why? Because ln e equals to one, uh, ln n is greater than ln e when n is greater than e, right? Okay, so let's set the n to be 3. Because I defined a larger number. Okay. <clears throat> so, from here we can say, so, for p greater than 1, for p greater than 1, we know that 1 over n to the p um, and actually the series. Is less than or equal to this series. This is always true, but uh, maybe I'll say it this way. For e greater than one, this series is convergent. P series test uh, by P series, and therefore by comparison test, this series is converted. That's for greater than one. The thing is, what if the P is equal to one or less than one? Okay. We solve one problem already, right? Okay. 
Andre? I said it was diverging. But why? The thing is you'd bound it above in this case, not below. Let's say when P equals to one, what happened? For P equals to one, then the series will be one over N L N N. I think we can do integral tests, huh? Let uh, f x be one over x ln x. Uh, f x is positive for n greater than one. Uh, for x greater than one. and it is decreasing. Positive, decreasing, what else? Fn equals to one over n ln n, which is a sub n. I think there's one more. Positive, decreasing, and continuous. Fx is continuous uh, on the interval from two in this case. Right? Maybe I need a two also here. Now then I can do integral test. Integral from two to infinity of one over x ln x dx. That's equals to limit t goes to infinity of integral from two to t dx over x ln x. Hmm. What is our substitution here? U equals to ln x. So du is dx over x. That's du over u. That is limit t goes to infinity of natural log of u for ln q to ln t. This will be ln of ln t minus ln of ln t. But this will be infinity. So p equals to 1 will be divergent. Therefore, for p equals to 1, The series from two to infinity of one over n to the p natural of n is divergent, but why? By integral. Now I think once it is less than less than that. I don't know what happens if P is less than one. For P less than one, what will happen? How will you do this thing? Hmm. 
I really want to try using a comparison test, but I don't, I don't think it's doable. I think I need, I don't know, I don't know. I think I still go back to integral test. Can we say integral test and then a the integral when p is like greater than, less than one, then the integral is divergent? Mm, the thing is this though, the thing is one over this, this guy here, you want to say that this is greater than one over n to the p for p less than one? Is it what you are saying? No, I was saying if we make that the uh, whole thing an integral and then uh, by p, p integral, the integral is divergent. I'm not sure. So one over x to the p ln x from yeah. two to infinity dx. You want to say that this is divergent for so basically you do integral tests. Yeah, integral tests and then we we don't have to show any work maybe because of P integral. Can we do oh. that? Uh I would love to, but the thing is this is not P integral. P integral if you have integral uh, only x to the p at the bottom. So that's not p integral. But can we do u sub and then make it like p minus one? Or p plus one, I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure too. Okay. Uh, Let's see, the thing is if I want to do, so basically you want to compute this integral, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Okay, so, and to help us with uh, that substitution, let me get one over x and then x to the p minus one ln x dx. Is it okay? Yeah. By substitution later on, this will be ln2, and then this is ln. Let me just do this. is my scratch work, okay? But this is so not appropriate. Uh, so this will be 1 over u, and 1 over x dx becomes du. What happened to this? Thing? If my u is ln x, then e to the u will be x and x to the p minus one will be e to the u to the p minus one. Ooh, that's ugly. I really don't want to do that. Hmm. What should we do? Yeah, actually I have interest in this question because of this part. What happened when P is less than one? I think I know, I know, I know. So let me make it n to the negative p first, like that. And then this is equals to n to the one minus p over n ln n.
Is it okay? And then I claim that this is greater than greater equals to one over n ln n. You see what? See, p is less than one. P is less than one. So <clears throat> one minus p will be positive. Right? So n to the zero must be less than n to the one minus p. Is it right? Okay. By actually above, but the series from two to infinity of one over n ln n is divergent as shown above. We did that earlier, right? We did that here when p equals to one. Okay, so by comparison test, this series is convergent, is divergent when for p less than because it's bounded below by something divergent. Number 39, another interesting question. <clears throat> proof that I, I don't really do proof in this class, huh? So I do more right now, today. So if A sub N is non-negative and the series of those terms is convergent, Prove that the series of the squares is convergent. How do you prove this? I think I want to say that <clears throat> I want to say that uh, let s equals to the sum of a sub n. Okay, so the sum of a sub n being square equals to s squared, right? But notice that on the left-hand side, that's actually a sub one squared plus a sub two squared plus a sub three squared and on. That is actually less than equals to the square of a sub n. I, what I want to say is this. What I want to say is, uh, remember the, the squares, like x plus y squared is equals to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, okay? And if x and y are both positive or non-negative, then this is greater than x squared plus y squared. You see what? Do you see what I mean? The summation, the summation of a sub n squared, that summation consists of a sub one squared plus, I'm sorry, this the, the square here, consists of a sub one squared plus a sub two squared all the way 
but plus something else. So this some visualization actually needed here. This is equals to the sum of a sub n squared plus something else. And that something else is positive because all the terms a sub i, a sub n, all the terms are positive. Okay, so basically then we can say the sum, the square of the sum is greater equals to the sum of the squares. Right? But this is convergent. This is convergent. Now, you, if a positive series, if a series with positive terms bounded above by uh, something convergent, then that series is convergent. That's for number 39. <clears throat> uh, what else? I don't know what's the answer for number 44. Give me a second. Number 44. I look at that, I have no clue. <laughs> Show that uh, the nth term is positive and the series is convergent. Then show that the series of natural log of 1 plus a sub n is convergent. Ooh, I don't know. Let's take a break, 10 minutes while I wait, uh, I think about this. So we come back at 8.30. Okay, proof. Uh, I steal the idea from Andre. Andre said the following. Uh, can we prove this? Let me use another color first. Uh, isn't it that natural log of one plus a sub n is always less than a sub n. Is that true? And the answer is actually yes. Basically, what you need to show is that natural log of one plus x is less than x. Okay, now, why is this true? Well, because one plus x is, I basically rewrite it in exponential form, is less than e to the x, okay? But why is this true though? The question is, why is this true? Okay. Uh, I will show you first reasoning by graph so that we can just use it. Okay, e to the x looks like this and the graph of one plus x looks like this. So you notice that the one plus x is always below e to the x, right? Okay, so e to the x is greater than one plus x actually for every x, actually for every x. Okay, 
and because of one to one function, uh, then uh, this is true. Natural log is one to one. Okay, now because this is true uh, for all positive, of course, or zero, uh, this is equal to, equal to, then this is also true. Okay, so let me just use that as a fact. Note that one plus x is less than equals to e to the x. So <clears throat> natural log of one plus x is less than equals to x for every x. Uh, this one then for every x positive. Okay. Now, of course, that will also be true for one natural log of a sub one plus a sub n must be less than equals to a sub n. Okay, therefore, but at the same time, uh, this is positive though. At least non-negative, is it right? Because this is greater equals one. Okay, so we get the terms that is positive, at least non-negative. Therefore, the series here is bounded above by something convergent by comparison test. This series is convergent. Okay. One of the issue is one of the big issue, but, but I want to let you use this as a fact instead of something you need to prove. But uh, how to show an inequality holds without looking at the graph. How do you show that's true? <clears throat> One way to show is uh, I want to do derivative, but uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, I want to define, uh, let a new function, let me call that fx, equals to e to the x minus x minus one. Okay, I want to show that this is always positive. Need to show that fx is non-negative for uh, x greater or equal to zero. Okay, now the proof that I show you here uh, is not, uh, how to say that? <clears throat> it, it works for this. I mean, uh, you may find cases where the proof here doesn't work, but still uh, it is true. Okay, but what I want to show is this, that if you do the first derivative, what happened? The first derivative of x will be e to the x minus one. Okay, and this is still greater or equals to zero for x greater or equals to zero. Is it true? Right, e to the zero is one. Okay, in other words, in other words, fx is increasing on x greater or equals to zero, right? Now, so what is fx? Uh, I'm sorry, what is f0? f0 is e to the zero minus zero minus one, that is zero. Okay, but because fx is increasing, 
then fx must be greater or equals to that zero for x greater or equals to zero. Does it make sense? So it's like like at zero, at zero, when x equals to zero, the value is zero, right? Okay. Now, how do I show that when you move to the right, this is positive? How do I show that? One way to show that I look at the derivative, the derivative is positive. Therefore, the function is increasing, right? Because of these, then the function is increasing. Is it right? Now, because the function is increasing, <clears throat> then when you move to the right, the value of that fx must be greater than the value to the left of that. Okay, now so it means e to the x minus x minus 1 is at least 0 for x greater or equals to 0 which means it is true 1 plus x is less than or equals to e to the x. Notice that I do this proof without, <clears throat> I do this proof without uh, graphing. Okay, I do this proof without graphing. Now, the thing is, do you notice that this proof actually also works even if I change the one as long as I change this x. As long as I can change that x. So suppose, for example, I basically say, so this is another topic, okay? Uh, can you find, uh, find uh, y such that I pick a random number, 10 plus x is less than equals to e to the x for x greater equals to that y. Fine, basically you have e to the x like this, right? Now, 10 plus x will be a line, it's a linear line. Now, the thing is, there must be some point where e to the x actually exceeds 10 plus x. Now, can you find this y? Okay, now, at this point, even when you have a graph, where even when you can graph it, you know when you graph it, there must be a y, right? Okay, but can you find that y in the precise mode, for example? Okay, uh, I don't think I don't think I can, I can do it that well here. But at least then I need to do trial and error. Okay, so eventually I will let f x equals to e to the x minus x minus ten. You will see that this is an increasing function, right? F prime x will be positive, non-zero at least. Okay, so it will be increasing. Okay, so all I need to do now is to find a y such that it's already positive. <clears throat> find a y such that it's already positive. So let, well, you can set y equals to, let's say, 5. Uh, maybe 5 is too big. How about 3? Maybe 3. 4 definitely work. Okay, uh, for y equals to 4, 1 plus x less than equals to e to the x, I mean x equals to 4. Or x equals to 4, 14 is less than equals to e to the 4. Right? e to the 4. This is <clears throat> This is less than 2 to the 4, which is less than e to the 4. Is it right? Yeah, e is 2.7 something. <clears throat> or 
x equals to 2, I know that 12 is still not less than b squared. So our y will be between 2 to 4. All you need is actually four. All you need is actually four. You can set the limit y here as five. In other words, in other words, later on, if I look back into this original problem here, if I look back into this original problem, here, I can modify this to be that as long as, as long as this is convergent, then the series then the series natural log of whatever constant, let's make it 10 plus a n, will be convergent too. You see what I mean? It will be convergent too. Because what? Uh, eventually, eventually, natural log of 10 plus a sub n, eventually is less than a sub n. Is it right? I use the word eventually because it doesn't start from one, doesn't start from two, but start from some y, right? Start from some y. As long as you can find a y such that this inequality starts works, then this is true. So question number 44 is the question that I want to show that it's actually true even if you change this into another constant greater than one. <clears throat> another proof, another proof. Uh, this, I kind of like thinking really while during the break. Uh, another proof is the following. Uh, notice that the series A sub N is convergent. Let's use limit comparison test. So limit N goes to infinity of A sub N over natural log of one plus A sub N we want to show that, need to show that this is actually a positive constant. Now, how do I do that? Let fx equals to a sub x. Ooh, that's ugly, huh? <laughs> For x greater equals to whatever some m. No, I don't want to use m, some m. But basically I get the superposition function. Now the thing is, I wonder if I can really do that. My goal is later on, I will do this. Is, uh, so this will be fx. This is natural log of one plus fx. Now, because a sub n is con the sum of a sub n is convergent, then the limit of a sub n must be this term must go to zero, right? So the limit of x goes to infinity of fx, my superposition function earlier, must also go to zero. So what happened is this will go to zero over zero. Now what I want to do then, I want to do log of the proof. So this is limit x goes to infinity of <clears throat> one plus fx, right? But according to the limit that we saw, this is actually just one. This is one plus something. It's one plus limit of fx where x goes to infinity, that's equals to one. 
In other words, I have just proven limit x going to infinity of fx over one limit natural log of one plus fx equals to one. Consequently, then the limit of the terms will also go to one. But there's a problem with this proof. Of course, once I can show this then by limit comparison test, uh, the series one plus a sub n also converges. Right? Okay. But there's a problem with this. There's a problem with this. Uh, my problem is, do we actually have this guy? And is that continuous? Not necessarily true, at least not now. Okay, so the proof I present to you here in blue is not a valid proof. It's not a valid proof because we don't even know if we have such kind of superposition function. Okay, let me leave it there. <clears throat> Let me leave it there with the suggested homework. I think I already gave the suggested homework in the in that video. Let me write it down here. Suggested homework from this 11.4 would be from number three, especially number three to number 35. Let's go to 11.5. I get, I get really... Uh, I get really distracted or feeling that question quite deep. <clears throat> now notice that the proof that I show you earlier for that number 44 let me go back a little bit. See, <laughs> if, if you don't stop me, I will not stop. Uh, the, the proof that we use in number 44, this thing, the way and the one we claim this, this is true because one plus a sub n is less than e to a sub n and that's true because one plus x is less than equals to e to the x for every x that's why that's true now the thing is for number 45 for number 45 i think we can use the same argument though okay the argument is if the series a sub n with positive term is convergent, does it imply the series of sine a sub n convergent? <clears throat> and the way we prove it basically, uh, can you prove? So the question is, can we show that sine a sub n is bounded above by a sub n. In other words, is sine x is less than x for every x positive. Okay. Intuitively, it seems to be true. Why? Because x has this kind of line. This is the line. And sine x is sinusoidal, right? So for every x that you pick, as long as x is positive, then the line must be above the sine graph. But that's geometrical approach. How do we show that with uh, algebra or analysis? So we let, we define a new function, fx equals to x minus sine x. So the derivative will be one minus cosine x, and this is at least zero for every x, right? That's at least zero for every, actually for every x, it doesn't have to be positive x. 
it's always increasing. Is it right? It means fx is increasing. Now f0 is 0 minus 0, that's 0. And because it is increasing, then for x greater equals to 0, fx greater equals to f0, which is 0. Okay, which means x minus sine x is greater or equals to zero, x is greater or equals to sine x. Therefore, a sub n is greater or equals to sine of a sub n. Now, the rule here is x has to be positive, right? So, and that's what we have. Okay, that's the sketch of the proof, okay? Well, uh, question number 44 and number 45 actually based on the same idea. Uh, I need to go to 11.5. Uh, Am I re recording this? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, 11.5 <clears throat> alternating series test. 11.5 alternating. series test. <clears throat> Let B and B non negative. Okay. Then alternating series is defined to be alternating sign of that non-negative terms. Is an alternating series. And so that's the definition of alternating series. Now, alternating series test says the following. Let the series negative one to the n minus one b n b. Of course, uh, it's an alternating series b n is non-negative. That Bn is decreasing down to zero. Mm -hmm. So implicitly, there are two things here. First, this term has to be decreasing. Second, the limit is zero. <clears throat> then the alternating series is convergent. Now you can see that statement actually uh, on page 751. Now, but notice that I condense two things into one statement. They actually say that it is convergent to zero and decreasing. Now, I want to just <clears throat> make it a bit weaker. It doesn't have to be strictly decreasing all the time. You just need eventually decreasing. Okay, you just need eventually decreasing and uh, convergent to zero. That's all you need. Now, the proof is actually there, but I would like to give you the intuitive proof. Okay, notice that we are keep on adding. We have this, we have B1 is greater than B2, greater equals to B3. 
and on, right? And eventually it goes to zero, <clears throat> right? Uh, then the series is basically B1 minus B2 plus B3 minus B4 and on. Okay, let we define as n to be the n partial sum will be the sum from one to n only. And you will see the following situation. Let's say this is zero. S1 is basically B1. Now B2 is less than B1 but you subtract. So when I subtract, I go to the left less than magnitude of B1. Okay, so you will see this is my S2. Okay, follow me. Then from here, I will add B3. So my S3 is here. And then I subtract B4, subtract B4. My S4 is now here. So notice that, notice that my next term, my next term is always bounded by, is always bounded by the previous two terms. So let's say I start from a positive term, then the next term will be less than or Uh, put it this way, put it this way. If we look at the graph, if I super zoom this graph, notice that, notice that my S2 is here, my S3 is less than, is in between S1 and S2. My S4 will be between S2 and S3. My S5 will be, this, and the fifth partial sum will be between S4 and S3, so on and so forth, right? So it's, it's a kind of like moving this way from zero, go to S1, and then go to S2, and then go to S3, and then go to S4. You see that? So eventually it is being squeezed by uh, the previous terms, right? It's squeezed by, uh, by, by the previous terms. The proof in our textbook is actually more technical. The proof that I show you here is more intuitive. Okay, the proof in our textbook actually relies heavily on monotonic sequence theorem. The way I show you here is uh, the next term, the next sum must be between the previous two sums. Okay, so this is very intuitive. Okay, now, then going back to this eventually here, going back to that eventually. So it is okay actually for the first couple terms, you actually move this way and then you get a little bit bigger and then a bit smaller and then a bit bigger. As long as eventually it actually tamed down, then it actually con uh, converges to a certain uh, limit, okay? as long as it is eventually decreasing and goes down to zero, okay? A lot of painting here, huh? a lot of graph. So to prove alternating series has to be convergent, to prove that alternating series is actually convergent, then all you need to show is that the sequence is decreasing n 
eventually decreasing. You don't need to be strictly decreasing, eventually decreasing and converging to zero. That's all you need to do. Okay, now let me say here, notice that no, that S1 is greater or equals to S3 is greater or equals to S5 and S2 is less than S4 is less than S6 and on. Okay, so Sn will be in between those and eventually it will be squeezed down to a certain comfort, to a certain limit. Okay, problems. Choose four problems. Choose four problems between, uh, you decide. Uh, maybe from six to 20, maybe choose two or three problems. Are uh, you telling me? Number 10, let's see, number 10. The C is the series from one to infinity of negative one to the n of square root of n over n plus three. Between two n plus three conversion. It's alternating, right? It's alternating. <clears throat> so I need to first show claim. Maybe I write it this way. Let A sub N be the non-negative term. So I separate the I separate the alternating part. I separate the alternator. Now I want to claim that A sub N is decreasing. <clears throat> proof. So you claim that first and then you prove it. Proof let F X equals to square root of x over 2x plus 3. You know where I'm going, right? Okay, so note that fn equals to square root of n over 2n plus 3. So basically, I get the continuous proposition function, okay? And f prime x equals to, now you decide, 2x plus 3 squared at the bottom. And I have this, that will be 1 over 2 square root of x times 2x plus 3 minus square root of x times 2. <clears throat> this is equal to that square root of x plus three over two square root of x minus two square root of x. Hmm. Let me multiply the top and the bottom by square root of x to make it easier for me to see. That will be x plus 3 half minus 2x over square root of x times 2x plus 3 squared. This is 3 over 2 minus x over square root of x, 2x plus 3 squared. Notice that this is negative. 
f prime x is negative when x is greater than three halves, right? The denominator is already positive. Okay. So it is not increase uh, decreasing from one though. It start from one point five. Okay. Well, basically, we are saying that f x is decreasing for when <clears throat> x greater equals to two greater e greater than three half. Therefore, a sub n is decreasing when n is greater or equal to 2. Okay. In other words, uh, a sub n is eventually decreasing. It doesn't start from 0. Well, anyway, so I proved that it is decreasing eventually. Now I need to prove the second claim. So this is the first claim. The second claim. That a sub n convergent to zero. Proof. Limit n goes to infinity of a sub n is limit n goes to infinity of square root of n over 2n plus 3. How do you prove this, by the way? So divide by square root of n, right? Limit and you can I use? I don't think I can use logical rule. No, don't use logical rule. I need to get uh, you cannot use logical rule on sequence. So that's equals to this is square root of n. Limit n goes to infinity of one over. 2 square root of n plus 3 over square root of n. <clears throat> that is 0. Actually, no, I suppose to divide by n, not square root of n. Right? Divide by n, divide by n, divide by n. So I get one over square root of n. This is two plus three over n. There will be zero over two plus zero, then zero. Okay. So According to those claims, once you show that it is eventually decreasing and zero. So by alternating series tests, the alternating series I think it's without minus one. The alternating series is convergent. That's for number 10. What else? <clears throat> Does it really matter much if you divide by that? Uh, we're supposed to divide by the largest degree, the highest degree. Yeah, we're supposed to divide by the highest degree. Okay. The problem with my work earlier when I divide by square root of n is that I get something goes to infinity here. Right? Okay, while the purpose of dividing by the highest degree is everything goes to a finite number, not to infinity. So this argument is actually uh, better because this goes to a finite number zero, finite number zero, and this is two. That's why we divide by the highest degree instead of somewhere in between okay
Any else? I actually wonder how about number, for example, number <clears throat> 14. Is the series from one to infinity of the alternating series arc tangent n convergent? I don't think so. Solution. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let a sub n be arc tangent n. The thing is limit n goes to infinity of a sub n is limit n goes to infinity of r tangent n is what? Can you tell me? When n goes to infinity, what is r tangent of n? Power of 2. Power Right? Okay. So by alternating series test, this alternating series is divergent. <clears throat> Eventually, you will have a series that is add pi over 2 minus pi over 2 add pi over 2 minus pi over 2 like that you know okay when it is even that's some number when it is odd that's another number okay so number 14 is not <clears throat> uh, some little note that alternating series can also be created using cosine n pi. Okay, because when cosine pi is negative one, cosine two pi is one, cosine three pi is negative one, so on and so forth. So you can actually do it this way, of course, for uh, n an integer. <coughs> Last one, number 20, number 20, then later on we do the estimate, number 20, the series is the series n equals to 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n of square root of n plus 1 minus square root of n convergent. I somehow think it is convergent. Let A sub N be the non negative part. Hmm. Let me multiply by the conjugate. So multiplied by square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n over square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. So the n term is basically n plus 1 minus n over square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. This is 1 over square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n. Oh, yeah, then it, this is decreasing. <clears throat> Note that 
square root of n plus square root of n plus 1 must be less than square root of n plus 1 plus square root of n plus 2. Is it right? Maybe we'll use simpler way. No square root of n is less than square root of n plus 1 is less than square root of n plus 2. Right? Okay. So square root of n is less than square root of n plus 2. Now I add square root of n plus 1 both sides. And of course, these inequality are non-negative. Why I need non-negative? Because then when I do the reciprocal, I can show that it is non-negative and decreasing. Right? Basically, a sub n is greater than a sub n plus 1. Now, you see that I have shown that it is decreasing. <laughs> right? Okay. Furthermore, so I already show it is decreasing. Now, I want to show that the limit is 0. Limit n goes to infinity of a sub n is limit n goes to infinity of that one over square root of n plus square root of n plus one. That's zero. So by alternating series test, this limit n goes to infinity of negative, I'm sorry, not limit, the series. N of square root of N plus one minus square root of N is convergent. Okay. <clears throat> Now, how about the estimate? Notice that that uh, S n will be bounded by is bounded above and below by S n n. Uh, S n minus one, the previous term, and the previous two uh, sum. Pictorially, pictorially, let's say this is S n minus one, this is S n minus two, or vice versa. The S will be in between. Okay, such that we can say the error the error up to Sn is uh, the error here, the error up to the n partial sum is always less than the difference between s n s n the previous term in other words the error is always less than equals to to they say it's always less than equal to the difference between s n and the even previous term but by definition, that's basically the absolute of the difference. <clears throat> the 
okay, by the nth term. Okay, so the error, which is the difference between the infinite sum with the n partial sum will be less than equals to the absolute of the n term. Actually, to be more precise, if we see the uh, a sub n as the, the non-negative part, then the error will be less than that. Okay, now how do we use this fact? How do we use this fact? Let's see number 24. Okay, the series. N times five to the N. Uh, what we need to do is first show that it is convergent. Show it is convergent. Second, find the number of terms so that the error is less than 0 0.0001. How many terms you need to add such that the error is less than the fourth decimal place? Solution. The first one I think is quite easy. So you basically need to separate, let's call this part A and this is part B. So let the positive term be one over n times five to the n. Okay, we need to show that this is decreasing and the limit is zero. Right, uh, let me just say this uh, claim, the limit is zero, a sub n converges to zero proof. This is a positive term, which is less than one, less than equals to one over n. I just squeeze that. Okay, so zero less than equals to the limit. Less than equals to the limit. Or by squeeze theorem, limit of this term is zero. I use that, I claim that one first because it's easier to prove. How to prove that it is decreasing? Clearly, n is less than n plus 1, right? Such that 5 to the n is also less than 5 to the n plus 1, right? And let me keep it positive. Okay, because it is not true if you, uh, one of them is negative. Only positive times not positive give us this. And because it's positive, so the reciprocal, you reverse the inequality sign. Now, I don't really want to resort to the derivative all the time. So, sub n is the easy by alternating series test. 
to series. Okay, now next part B. We want the error to be less than 0 0.0001. Right? That's what we need. Now, but at the same time, we know that the error is less than the nth term. which is less than, which is equals to one over n times five to the n. And I want to set this to be less than 0 0.0001. Okay, so one over n times five to the n, less than one over 10,000. Basically, I need to find the n such that n times 5 to the n is greater than 10,000. You don't need to find the exact n actually. Okay, you just need to find something well where for n, like for this one, right? If you want to play crazy for n grade, uh, equals to greater equals to 10,000, it will work, right? Do you think so? But you know this is an overkill. That's overkill. I don't think we need 10,000. Just do try and error. Let n equals to, let's say, 4. Will that work? Do you think it will work? 100. 25. No, I need 5. Is it true? What is five to the six? <clears throat> yeah, it's 15,000 something. Okay, so the nth partial sum up to five. Of negative one to the n over n five to the n uh, will give us the uh, sum whose error less than 0 0.0001. You basically need to set the n term to be uh, less than that error. The less than the error that you want. Now let's apply this to the last question. I mean, one more question. <clears throat> number 28 or number 30? Let's say number 30. Approximate the sum correct to four decimal places. <clears throat> For number thirty, so we have the series from one to infinity of negative one to the n over three to the n times n factorial solution. Let's find out how many terms we need first. Okay, let the positive term to be one over three to the n times n factorial. Okay, this need to be less than 0 0.0001, four decimal places, right? Okay. 
this is 1 over 10,000. It means we need to find the n such that 3 to the n times n factorial is greater than 10,000. That's what we want. And just do it by trial and error. Use your calculator. Find the n that has, uh, that is greater than, you know what, let me use Excel now. Where's my Excel? <clears throat> This is my n, this is my n term, this is my n, uh, n sum. Put it in the middle. <clears throat> 1 over 3 to the n, oh, actually, yeah, 1 to the n times n factorial. So this is one, two, and on. This is three to the n oh, sorry. equals to three to the n times times n factorial. Uh, and factorial. I wonder what is the factorial notation. Okay, F A C T of What's wrong? Oh, here, should be this. Duh. Now, hmm. let's see how. <sighs> oh, no, I don't need this. I need the reciprocal, huh? I need the reciprocal one over this. No wonder it goes to infinity. Okay, so here we see that the fifth term is already the fifth term is already less than that. So I see that uh, when n equals to, what am I doing? Then? When n equals to 5, when n equals to 5, 3 to the 5th times uh, 5 factorial is already more than 10,000. equals to 14580. So all I need to do is actually add the first five terms. Right? But don't forget this is alternating though. This is alternating. Okay, this is alternating. So all you need to do is actually uh, the first term Actually, up to four only. Yeah, up to four only. The fourth term, I, I just need to go up to the fourth 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I need to make some correction here. That's true. Then. <clears throat> yeah, we just need to uh, go up to. Hmm. It actually looks like this. And this one like that. <clears throat> so this is actually I just need to go up to four term. <clears throat> I just need to go up to the four term. Not five times. Uh, likewise, here I just need to go up to the fourth term. So negative one over three times one plus one over nine times two minus one over twenty seven times three plus one over eighty one times. Actually, this is six here. <clears throat> Times 30. Okay, that's good enough to give us the answer we want. <clears throat> Suggested homework from here. So 11.5 from number 3 to number 19, and then 23 to number 29, I think is good enough. <clears throat> Let me start 11.6. I will just start a little bit. Give me a second. Give you a brief introduction. 11.6. Eleven point six absolute convergence. And then later on, we have ratio tests. And group tests. Definition. A series. is absolutely convergent if the sum of the absolute is convergent. Okay. Now, a series, another definition, a series A sub N is conditionally convergent or oh, where am I? Absolute convergent means if you apply the absolute sign, it is convergent. So, <clears throat> for example, column, can I find a series that is absolutely convergent? Like, like, for example, negative 1 over n squared. This one is alternating. 
right? This one is alternating series, right? Okay, and you see that one over n squared, the positive part, the positive part is decreasing down to zero. Convergent, decreasing and convergent down to zero. So this guy is convergent, right? Now the thing is, even if you apply absolute sign, it becomes a P series with P equals to two. This is still convergent. So the original series, the in this case alternating, is convergent. The absolute is also convergent. Therefore, it's absolutely convergent. You see what I mean? So you will see later on one way to show convergence. One way to show convergence is uh, to show that it is absolutely convergent. Okay. <clears throat> now conditionally convergent if the series is convergent, but the series of the absolute is not convergent, is divergent. Okay, the series is called conditionally convergent if it is convergent but not absolutely. Okay, theorem. If a series is absolutely convergent, then the series itself must be convergent. Okay, that's simply because that's simply because the series here. I want to say this. I want to say that uh, absolute of a series A sub n, my time's up, but uh, let me do a little proof here. Let me do a little proof. I want to show that this uh, series A sub n is less than equals to the absolute of the series. Agreed? Uh, actually, no, this is, no, this is not necessary. Go, go, hold on, hold on, hold on. A sub n is less than equals to absolute of A sub n. Agree? <clears throat> and this is bounded below by negative absolute of A sub n. Now, then when I take the summation, we get this situation. But the expression on the left-hand side here is exactly the opposite of the expression on the right-hand side, such that if I apply absolute sign to this, it must be bounded above by the sum of a sub n. But this is positive. That's positive. So basically now you have a series that is bounded above. Okay, yeah, you have a series bounded above. So this is the intuitive work.
Okay, so if this guy is convergent, then it must be convergent there. Our textbook actually proves it slightly different ways, though, but the, the nature is basically like this. Okay, now on then on Monday, uh, we will do problems regarding this. Basically, we need to show absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent. And then we do a, a ratio tests and then do tests. Please read that on your own. Read. Ratio test and group test. I just need to you to read it. You don't need to do anything else. Okay, so on Monday we just do problems for eleven point six and eleven point seven. See you then. Hey, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. You too.